Hey, hey, everybody. So my guest today is Marco. He is the co-founder of Plausible.io, a lightweighted and open source website analytics tool that they call a privacy-friendly alternative to Google Analytics. So as always, we would like to hear more of the founding story and the strategies that accelerated their growth success. Marco, are you ready to take us to the top? Yes, Mike. All right, here we go. So can you tell us more about who you are and what Plausible is all about? Maybe you could also highlight why we should all ditch Google Analytics for your software. <laughs> Good question. Um, Plausible Analytics, uh, like you mentioned, is a, a kind of a different way of looking at web analytics. So pretty much every website has uh, or, or has had at some point Google Analytics installed. So that's kind of the industry standard. Everyone knows it, but it is quite a kind of heavy tool. You know, it takes 10 seconds to load it. And it's also heavy in terms of scripts you need to put on your site, kind of slows down your page. And obviously, it's very difficult to use. So you kind of, uh, if you're not uh, very much into analytics or you don't have much experience with it, you will get lost just by opening your uh, Google Analytics dashboard. And obviously, just by being a, a tool made by Google, you have all these privacy uh, issues that come along with it, such as the use of cookies and, and, and kind of tracking for the purposes of, of kind of uh, the advertising, their advertising business and so on. So... Plausible Analytics is, is a different way of looking at all of that. So we are open source and transparent. We are very lightweight. So our script is less than 1KB in, in size, which means it's very fast to load, especially compared to Google Analytics. And, and then we are, you know, we don't use cookies and we are privacy friendly, privacy focused analytics tool, which means that we don't, we actually don't, we're not interested in like, what people do in the sense of, you know, uh, creating a, a personal profile about them in order to sell them advertising and in order to follow them around the web. But we basically just want to give you as a site owner, as a business owner, some useful data, some useful insights without really uh, getting into the, you know, uh, really, really uh, privacy invasive practices that uh, Google Analytics does. Yeah, so... Sorry, Marco, I have to admit using Google Analytics as well. I need to say this sounds really interesting, though. So I definitely have to check it out. You probably convinced me. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, it, it's I think Google Analytics is installed uh, depending on where you look, but it's installed on some say 50 something percent of all the websites on the net. Some say up to 80, I think five, six, seven percent of all the websites. So it's it's you know it's quite common to have Google Analytics installed, but uh, it's nice that you know you see the the value if something is something like this, uh, an alternative like this, and uh, quite a few people are doing the same. And we've seen you know we've seen people moving and kind of starting to remove Google Analytics, which is pretty cool. I can definitely see that. Yeah, makes sense. So, what is the business model of Plausible, and how are you making money? We're, we're just a straight up uh, normal SaaS uh, startup. So basically we do subscriptions. Uh, it's a bit different because uh, we're an open source company as well. But, uh, you know, you, we have the hosted service. So basically you can come to plausible.io and you can have us, you know, run the analytics for you like, you know, uh, from Google Analytics as well. We, we you know, we, we manage it. We make sure it's the uptime is there. We make sure that it's very fast loading. We make sure that everything is, is, is working. So you don't need to worry about analytics, but you, you know, you worry about uh, getting the stats and, you know, getting the traffic to your site and things like that. So... Uh, we basically um, have uh, different subscription plans uh, based on number of page views your site is having. And, you know, it goes, uh, our, our lowest tier starts at up to 10,000 page views per month. And, you know, if you pay, uh, if you pay monthly, that costs $6 per month. Or if you pay yearly, you get like a, a good discount. So it costs $4 per month. And, and that's basically it, a, a very straight, straight up uh, SaaS uh, subscription uh, business model. And how did the business start it out? Take us back from the idea to launch. Okay, so my co-founder, Uku, so he's, uh, he's the developer and the designer, and he, he started building uh, Plausible in, uh, I think it was around Christmas uh, 2018. Uh, so he, he, he launched kind of the first beta version uh, about, uh, I think it was like a few months into 2019. Uh, and the idea was to basically, like we, we, I mentioned already, he was aware of Google Analytics and some of the issues with it, such as it being really difficult to use and uh, being very slow and, and privacy invasive. So he was like, oh, he, if he thought he could build a, a, a different answer to it. 
so he did. He started building it, and then we, you know, we met up in early 2020, so early last year. And you know, he had the product ready, and he was looking uh, to get a co-founder on to help him kind of with the with the kind of marketing and communication side of things. And uh, you know, I saw the potential in the product. I was already in this this kind of field of, of privacy first, and and kind of you know, Google is not always good kind of uh, uh, area. And, and yeah, we got together, and and, and that, that that's basically how, how it started. So, are you guys bootstrapped, or have you taken any VC or funding? Yeah, so completely bootstrapped, self-funded. We we have no, uh, you know, we have no venture funding, no no funding at all. It's it, it's all uh, up to us. So basically, by uh, doing the subscription business model, we we basically have been profitable from day one, and, and and that's that's what we focus on. Wow, that's great. So, how did you get your first users to the product? So what happened was that uh, Indie Hackers is, is like one of the communities we're uh, kind of big fans of and, and always active pretty much even to this day daily. Uh, so Uku was uh, part of the community there and he basically just started uh, writing milestones. So if, if you go to Indie Hackers today, you have the milestones of plausible analytics from day one where Uku was like, oh, I'm, I think I'm going to build an analytics and here's, you know, or, or here's the first beta version that I have or, or here's the first kind of link that you, you can choose, you know, if you want to check it out. And all the way to today. Uh, so if you, if you go back there, that, that's how it started. Basically, first users came from indie hackers and you know first beta kind of uh, kind of testers and all that. That's that's where it started really. And when did you find out that the product was valid and you were really onto something? I think uh, so. If you look at it, uh, like so, first year. So let's say uh, early 2019 until early 2020. You know, Uku was building it slowly, slowly, you know, making improvements. And then I joined in March 2020. And, uh, you know, we started actually taking a serious the marketing side of things. We started publishing content. We started, you know, we started the social media uh, profiles and, and kind of presence. And if, if you look, at, we share everything on our website. You can see all the stats, including our, our website traffic. But there was a huge spike there when I published the first blog post in April uh, 2020. And we got so much, uh, you know, so much feedback. Uh, it went viral on Hacker News on the, on the you know, front page on, on the top of the Hacker News. So you got tons of, uh, you know, ton, tons of visitors and signups, first of all. But it, it, it's so much feedback came with people being very supportive and giving us very constructive feedback. And that's where we realized, you know, this is, there is something here and, and it's kind of, it feels like the, the culture about, you know, uh, using free products and, and, and from Google and all this uh, kind of ad tech giants and kind of, there's the culture is changing where people feel, you know, maybe we should pay a bit for our tools and then kind of, uh, you know, get something that, that's more valuable overall also for our visitors and for ourselves in general. So it feels like the culture is changing and it felt like that for us. And, and that's why we basically just, you know, continued from, from then on with that kind of uh, new uh, growth wave. Makes sense. Yeah. So what is your most important acquisition channel right now to get users on board? I think if you look at our stats, uh, Google, organic, <laughs> funny enough, uh, obviously Google is still the number one search engine and, and uh, Google organic search traffic is our biggest driver of trial signups. Uh, basically, uh, consistently month from month, it's been doing that you know, for the last year or so uh, si since we started publishing you know, uh, blog content and since we started getting Google traffic. So very targeted traffic, uh, very relevant. Uh, people spend something like three minutes uh, on site coming from Google and they also convert into trials uh, much more than some of the other sources. So I would say that's uh, number one source, even though it is a bit of funny that uh, Google is driving traffic to us and then we are taking away Google's uh, Google Analytics business uh, side by side. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny indeed. So, yeah, wait till they notice it. <laughs> Don't tell me about it. I've I've, uh, I've heard of all these different uh, algorithms from Google and how they can you know uh, you know I mean they can grow or, or, or kind of kill your business from uh, decision to decision. So so let's hope uh, that something like that doesn't happen to us. <laughs> well, when they see only plausible scripts on all websites, I guess you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're, right now we're, we're just uh, today we just passed uh, site number ten thousand. Like so, we now have uh, just over ten thousand uh, ten thousand websites. 
websites that we are installed on and kind of counting their visitors. So I think there's still a way to go because Google is Google Analytics is installed on I don't know a few hundred thousand, a few hundred millions. <laughs> yeah, that's a long way to go, <laughs> but who knows? So what is your most valuable lesson or fail you would say as a co-founder up to this point? I think. Um, Something that I was thinking about the other day, because I'm I'm collecting this uh, some of the uh, you know lessons learned in the first year. I think one that I I never really uh, put much attention into is documentation, because right now you know I'm, I'm the, we, there's two of us we're the co-founders and you know we're dealing with customer support as well. And what I've noticed is that if you actually listen to what people are saying what they're asking. And obviously you can fix that in the product and improve that, but you can also kind of answer those frequently asked questions in a nice, uh, not an FAQ because some people don't like that, but more like a nice uh, documentation or some kind of knowledge base thing. And uh, that has really helped us in terms of uh, reduce the number of uh, customer support inquiries we have and they reduced the kind of uh, amount of time we needed to spend on on dealing with customer support. So having a really, really nicely done documentation, kind of you know step by step and very how to guides and very clearly explained, is really something that I never never really understood the value of until I started working on Plausible. But now I feel it's it's one of the key things you can do for your startup because uh, otherwise you, you you will either have to hire you know customer support uh, representatives or you'll have to spend way too much time kind of uh, answering emails and so on rather than you know being focused on whatever is the, the main thing that you have to do. So definitely uh, great documentation is something I really appreciate right now. Yeah, totally agree on that one. We we ourselves started with a knowledge base like like three months ago. And it's really key to our, I would say, self-served support. So exactly. yeah, I can rely to that. At what stage is plausible right now in terms of revenue? And how much time did it take to get to this point? So basically, uh, right now, uh, we just passed 10,000 MRR, uh, I think it was last week. So I'm, I'm right now in, in our uh, payment process. So I can tell you uh, at this moment, so January 19th, we are on 10,431 MRR. Um, so we opened up for uh, subscriptions in summer of 2019. That's where we got, I think May or June 2019 was the first subscriber. And then it took us... Uh, like almost a year. So let's say it was uh, April 2020, uh, just when I started, uh, we were under 400 MRR then. So now from April last year to January 19th today, we've gone from 400 MRR to 10,431 MRR at this moment. So it, it's been an amazing uh, journey we've had and uh, yeah, basically a, a crazy experience that uh, I don't think, well, I did not uh, imagine it could, it could go uh, as successful as this for sure. <laughs> well, these are great numbers. Love it, Marco. So thanks for sharing the story behind Plausible. Now, Let's wrap it up with a lightning round of six questions to inspire others. Before we dive into today's lightning round, let's hear a quick word from a sponsor. Do you want to build your product the best way possible? Listening to user feedback is one of the best ways to do just that. Upvoti provides you with feedback boards which you can use internally or share publicly with your users. It also includes a nifty product roadmap. You are getting a 10% discount when you try out their 14-day free trial and subscribe to one of their plans. Use promo code PIRATES and URL set. Go to upvoti.com and start a 14-day free trial. Now, let's go back to the interview. If you would start a SaaS today, what would be the first action to take? Positioning. Um, do you want me to speak more about it or is it just like a one word answer? Well, yeah, you can talk more about it if you want. Okay, so positioning basically is, is uh, another thing that I've really learned the value of and uh, that I feel many uh, SaaS uh, kind of companies kind of don't take that seriously. Or at least when I visit their websites, I, I feel like they haven't done it that uh, seriously. So when, we, when, we, when I joined Plausible, that's the first thing we did. We basically changed the homepage to clearly position what Plausible does, what it is, what we believe in, and kind of how that compares to the biggest name in this market. And for us, it's it's Google Analytics. So now when you go to plausible.io, 
within seconds, you will know who we are, what we do, and whether plausible is something you'd like to try out or not. And I feel if you can do that for your SaaS, you will definitely uh, make a good first impression and you have a higher chance of kind of, uh, you know, getting some, uh, some traction. Great advice. What are some of your favorite apps and tools on your computer that you can't live without in running daily operations at Plausible? You know, I'm, I'm a, a bit of a different uh, marketer or founder. I, I run everything on Linux, if you can believe that, and, and Firefox. So without Firefox, and I live in Firefox, even this is recorded within Firefox. I, I just couldn't do anything without Firefox. I, I love that app and uh, I, I must be spending, I don't know, 10 hours in Firefox every day. So I, I cannot, uh, if I have to talk about my favorite apps and tools, I, I got to mention the one where I spend most of my day in, so Firefox. <laughs> Okay, so what about your favorite app on your phone? On my phone, I would say it's it's my phone. I keep more personal, so I would say it's Telegram. I I I, I use that to chat. Uh, I've kind of uh, de Google and de Facebooked my uh, personal kind of uh, communication as well. So I use Telegram to kind of get uh, and speak to my my family and my friends. What is your favorite book, which you can also recommend to people that are either starting or about to start a SaaS or a business in general? I'm always thinking more about communication, marketing side of things, and I think that's something many uh, star, you know, founders and SaaS founders are, are kind of uh, not that experienced in. So I would recommend Seth Godin. Uh, he's, he's like a big in, in the marketing space, but he's uh, I think he's the latest or like the, the one of these latest books is This Is Marketing. I think it was uh, published a couple of years ago, and it's just an amazing way um, to kind of get introduced to how marketing is done in, in you know in in these in these modern times. So this is marketing by Seth Godin. What's your favorite SaaS brand? I would say uh, Basecamp. I I don't know if you can consider them SaaS. I do. Uh, they're a startup and they do subscription business and so on. Uh, I I love. Uh, uh, how they have uh, very strong opinions and how they have their own kind of philosophy and, and their way of doing things. And uh, uh, it just uh, if it's something that kind of it's the common practice or best practice, it, they don't need to accept it if it does make sense to them. So they make their own rules. I mean, if, if I'm talking about another book, uh, they wrote a book called Rework, which is less of a marketing book, but still of, of a good startup book. So I would say um, Basecamp is, is the brand I admire the most. And if you need a good introduction to what that means exactly, check out this book called Rework that they wrote. And it's just an amazing way of thinking on how to build a brand and how to build a SaaS and how to run a, a kind of calm and healthy business. Great brand indeed. Rework is actually one book I always recommend to people that are starting a business. Oh, that's that's great. Uh, it's just an amazing book. I mean, I reread it uh, recently and uh, you, I, I read it first about 10 years ago and I reread it, I think, a week ago. And I couldn't believe how many of the things I've kind of internalized and how many of, of things I read in, in that book 10 years ago, I do today with Plausible without actually thinking that, oh, I'm following something I read about 10 years ago in, in Rework. It's, it's just, uh, it was such an influential book uh, uh, for me that uh, I, I do many of those lessons that I learned then without actually knowing it. I, I do them to this date and we use that for Plausible and, and it helps us. Yeah, agree to that. So... What is your favorite SaaS person to follow? I would say uh, Rand Fishkin. I don't know if you know him, but he's the he founded Moz, which is like a big uh, marketing uh, company, and now he's the founder of a SaaS called Spark Toro, which is in, in influencer marketing. And I've, I've followed him for years, and uh, I've uh, it's tweets, but it's also his blog. is 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 very uh, kind of active on the blog and. He's, uh, he's now released this tool called Spark Toro Trending, which I visit every day to kind of find uh, what's kind of the trending talking points and trending articles in the world of, of, of marketing and SaaS and SEO. So I would say he's somebody I've followed for years and I continue to follow him because it's, there's always something new and refreshing and it's always insightful. Rand Fishkin. Yeah, Rand is someone I followed for years as well. And to be honest, I was waiting for someone to name him here so I can tag him on Twitter. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, feel free to tag him. He's, he's a great guy as well. Thanks for that. Wow, great, Marco. Thanks for your time today and sharing your story with us. To conclude this interview, where can we learn more about Hugh and Plausible? I think the best way is plausible.io. 
uh, that's our website and you have like the the live demo there you have all our the way we're thinking about it you have all our stats there and that's a that's a great way to start uh, we're also obviously on twitter and you know so am i and uh, yeah but yeah our website is is you know a, a perfect place to to learn more about plausible <laughs>